You're in the field, digging at your site when you hit something. After a little work, you pull out a small pottery shirt. You add it to the other pieces you've collected so it can be cataloged and bagged up. But what happens to it after that? It usually ends up at a facility like the Florida Museum of Natural History on the University of Florida campus. That's where researchers like Dr. Lindsay Block use it along with hundreds of other artifacts to help piece together the story of those who are no longer here. All right, so we're here at the processing lab of the Florida Museum of Natural History, and this is where we bring in the artifacts that have come in from recent excavations. Often when you think about archaeology, you think about people digging, and um, that is a big part of what we do, but actually most of our time is spent processing the artifacts. So everything that comes into the museum is given a special number that ties it to um, the year it comes in, the project it comes in with, so that we're able to then track it throughout our system for the rest of um, its time here. Uh, so everything has its own accession number and that and then its provenience number from the actual field excavation. We make sure to maintain that with it at all times because an object without its provenience doesn't have a whole lot of value to us. So we bring things in to get washed. We use some very high-tech tools, um, strainers and toothbrushes. The first thing we'll do though is when we get um, artifacts, these have already been washed, but if they were still dirty, we'd go through and do a quick look to make sure there's nothing that's going to, going to dissolve in water, um, nothing that's going to be damaged by, um, by water or by brushing. So things like metal we'd pull out and we'd brush those dry because adding water creates more rust and creates more corrosion. Um, if we see pottery that's particularly soft, we're not going to wash that. We're going to um, set it aside as well so it, we don't want to um, damage anything um, if we can possibly avoid it. So everything else it's taken over here washed under just regular tap water with a brush and then put on one of these trays uh, to dry and we have banks of these trays um, that are mesh so that airflow um, can get through. They stay on these trays for a couple of days until all the water is gone and then we start uh, sorting the materials. So we'll um, we often end up with sort of a pile like this. We'll separate out the big stuff first, and we tend to sort pretty roughly by material to start with. So here we have shell, we have animal bone, we have pottery, and then uh, stone tools. And then in the middle is stuff that we're still going through. There's a lot of organic material, so bits of um, wood, smaller bits of bone and shell that we'll pick out eventually using tweezers to get all of it out. So small things like seeds and stuff like that we'll want to uh, carefully sift through and make sure we get all of it. Um, what we're looking at here are examples from uh, the Garden Patch site which is in Florida along the Gulf Coast and these are artifacts that date from about 1500 years ago from a, a mound complex at this site and um, so these are currently under investigation by Dr. Neil Wallace here at the museum. And so uh, along with his students, they're currently sorting these materials and then cataloging the materials. So cataloging is more than just an inventory. It tends to be looking individually at examples. Um, you might be recording things like the individual weight, like the thickness of pottery, any decoration found on it. You might be recording individual characteristics like the length and the width of a projectile point like this one, um, the weight, anything about the material that it's made out of. And all of this information is getting recorded either on paper forms or, on, um, or in a digital database. And so then we can use that information coupled with all the other provenience information we captured on the site. So things um, like soils and sediment descriptions or um, a lot of different mapping things that we were recording at the time to then really understand the patterning of, um, of how people were, were living and using that site. Each museum has its own system for cataloging. 
The Florida Museum of Natural History uses a chronological based system. So here at the museum, we use an accession number that um, is in two parts. So it starts with the year. So um, this, was ex this site was accessioned in 2019. And it actually, because excavation started in January and we started bringing artifacts back in January, it's actually the first accession from that year. So the accession is 2019-001. So we keep, um, so everything tied to that field season is under that accession number. And that then forms the basis of our catalog number when we go back to actually individually catalog all of these artifacts or groups of artifacts, then that those first two numbers from the accession 2019-001 um, will be will have additional numbers added to the end that are linked to the individual artifacts. The system is important since the museum is dealing with so many artifacts. So it's pretty easy for it to for if you spend say four to six weeks in the field and have sort of an average number of artifacts found, I don't know what that would be exactly, but several, let's say several tubs full of artifacts at the end, it could easily take a year or more to fully process those artifacts. And again, it depends on how many people you have working. But typically, on one of the things that makes field work great is that you have a big group of people, so you're able to get a lot of labor together and get a lot done. And then when things come back to the lab, you tend not to have so many people, so it takes longer. That's why keeping track of everything is so important. So archaeologists are really concerned with knowing the context or where artifacts came from because it can tell us, um, because the information that we, we need is really specific in order to say something about the, the site as a whole and about the people who are living there. And so we, in the field, we record uh, we tend to excavate by levels and sometimes within levels, and so we always record that information on the artifacts as they're collected in the field, so that's kept on the bags and in bag tags. And then when things come into the lab and get their accession number and um, their, their sort of permanent museum ID identification, then, um, then we keep that number with it at all times as well. And so that's, um, that's a way to make sure that we always know where everything is in the museum uh, because um, it can be, um, we often have multiple scholars working on the same project. They're also made available to the public and other researchers. Amanda wagner Pelkey is photographing part of this collection for an online database. With these particular pieces, my role is we are um, documenting them so that we can put them up on the website so that researchers from all around the world can use these images. And that's why it's so important to write clear field notes and maintain artifact provenance so that future scholars will have the correct information and context to conduct their research.